section. Oh, it's actually way warmer than I thought it was going to be. Hello, guys. Hi. <laughs> I'm really bad at these intros. Like, I don't know how to how to start them. Today's an exciting day. It is Friday. It's the weekend. Today I'm telling you all about the books that I have read so far in 2024. Very exciting. Like my January wrap up if you like. Jan into Feb wrap up. I'm also going to be talking about my foreseeable TBR, the books that are next on my list to read. So let's, let's get into it. Guys, I've had a weird reading year so far. Actually, you know what? I've had a good reading year so far. I've read books that were on my list for like the whole of 2023 that I just never got around to reading and I've smashed them out of the park in Jan. I wanted to get going on a good foot and get some books out, not out of the way. I wanted to read some books that I knew everybody's been talking about since the dawn of time and that way I can finally have an opinion on them and finally talk about them and finally feel like I am in on the joke. Let's just get going. Let's just, let's just, let's just get this ball a rolling. I've read five books so far this year and it's the 9th of Feb. So I mean, that's like one a week. The first book that I read this year is Down the Drain by Julia Fox. Oh, I've done it the wrong way around again. These up here. Okay, the first book I read this year was Down the Drain by Julia Fox. I have been wanting to read this for the longest time. I find this woman fascinating. Her life is insane. It's absolutely insane. Like, I feel so boring reading this book because... Uh, pfft, mind blown i think i saw jack edwards read this last year i saw sophie floyd read this last year and i just thought i also want to understand this woman a little bit better you know the first time i'm out of breath the first time i ever heard of julia fox was when she first started dating kanye west and i just thought like i don't know how fair it is that we're all just calling her like kanye west's girlfriend so i just wanted to know who the hell she was and boy do i feel close to this woman now. This is an expose all. She does not hold anything back in this book. We hear all about her years as a dominatrix, there's like years of drug abuse, um, entering like the kind of celebrity fame bubble and her experience dating Kanye and it just covers absolutely everything. Even her memory must be insane because the level of detail that she is recounting these events is a madness. I find it mad that me and her live on like the same planet and we're both human women and yet my life literally couldn't be any more different to this amazing woman right here. And she wrote the whole thing herself. There was no ghostwriter involved, not that there's anything wrong with, well, it's a controversial topic, but she wrote this book herself. She did the kind of creative direction herself and it is a beautiful book. The imagery of her is insane. It's a really interesting read and I absolutely fired through it. If you're interested in, how do I even describe this? Like if you are interested in reading about somebody's life that is probably just so different from your own and just feels like light years away from your reality, then this is a sensational look at that world that kind of alter world where I just don't think I'm ever going to exist within. If you're into memoirs, this is slightly, this has a lot of like trigger warnings. There's drug abuse, sexual assault, abusive relationships, a lot going on. So be warned, but it is absolutely fascinating. It's really well written. It's very vulnerable, very open, very honest. And I gave it 4.75 stars. Julia, well done, babes. Well done big fan. I now feel like I can watch her interviews and understand her a little bit more, like understand because I have her kind of background now. She's fascinating. Anyway, uh, the next book I read was Shatter Me by, by Tahira Mafi. This 
copy of this book is absolutely gorgeous like the sprayed edges it's just stunning and i saw this so for christmas or for my birthday i can't remember my boyfriend ryan got me a waterstones voucher and trust me i went into waterstones and i grabbed as many books as I could with the money I had and I bought them all in one go. I know exactly what I wanted. I feel like everybody has read Shatter Me when they were younger. I'm not too sure when it first came out. 2018? Oh, USA in 2011. Huh. Okay, so this has literally been out for like 15 years and I never read it. I never read it when I was younger and I was hearing everybody talk about it and I just wanted to kind of tick it off the list. I never read it when I was younger and I saw the book and it was just beautiful and I thought, you know what, I've not read it, I'll give it a go. A dystopian romance novel and it's giving Divergent a little bit, I think. I gave this book 3.75. I did enjoy it, like it was fast paced, action packed, kind of everything that you would expect from a dystopian romance YA novel. Um, but obviously it is YA, so just go into it knowing it's written for young adults, it's written for like teenagers, older teenagers. But I, I did, I really enjoyed it. Lost in the plot, I had a good time reading it. I don't, to be honest, I don't think I'm gonna commit to reading the whole series. I feel like I get the gist of what would be going on yeah so i don't know if i'm going to be committing to reading the whole series in fact i can tell you for certain i don't think i am not going to be committing to reading the series unless somebody says to me in the comments you're gonna love the series read the series but i just thought this copy was beautiful i'm glad i've read it it got 3.75 so i obviously really enjoyed it then i read <laughs> now this is this is just kind of funny this is just funny I read Flawless by Elsie Silver. This book, man, I've heard every Tom, Dick and Harry talking about this book. And I wanted to know what all the fuss was about when it came to cowboy romance. I've never read a cowboy romance. I had no idea what to expect. Smut. Smut is what you can expect. Absolute spice. Spice, like the whole thing, pure spice. I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that, I cannot lie. I obviously didn't do my research because <laughs> I was expecting a cutesy romance with like one spice scene. I was wrong. I was in fact wrong. I rated Flawless by Elsie Silver 1.25 stars. <laughs> I rated it 1.25 stars. That I feel like that's generous. <laughs> Do with that what you will. I will be sending this to my best friend for Valentine's Day. Then I read another book that I'd heard everybody talk about. Powerless by Lauren Roberts. This is another, my cat is just causing chaos. Romanticy YA book. Look at me, just thinking that I'm a young adult. I'd heard some of my favorite booktubers rave about it and I just wanted to give it a go. I read Fourth Wing and Akatar last year so I had an idea of what the romanticy genre was about and I gave this book a 2.75. To be honest, it was not my favorite. See, the thing is, is it was a little bit too similar to The Hunger Games for me. When I was reading it, it honestly just kind of felt like a repeat. And I, I get that obviously authors take inspiration from like their favorite books or their favorite films and from so many different places. For me, it just felt maybe a little bit too similar. I hate, because I don't want to keep saying it. I'm just going to stop reading YA, I think, because I just genuinely think they're not written for me and i've said this a million times at this point so i need to stop doing it to myself that was it this was the last ya book that i was intrigued to try and read so this is the last one i think for the foreseeable i think as a debut ya novel written by a young person it's it's good yeah i honestly don't have much to say on it other than it was very very hunger games with hints of harry potter and i just found it very ya if that makes sense. Cool. And then the final, my the most recent book that I read 
was a five star read which is super exciting and that was Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings and I hate this cover I really want to get I think it's the US cover the one that has like all the cool um the one that has all the stuff on it that's like related to what's in the book I want to get those books because they're really cool but I really don't like this cover it looks like they're at prom and they're doing it under a table. This was not what I was expecting at all. I was honestly expecting it to be kind of meh and it was just gonna be like rich people running around London and it was, but it's written incredibly. Like genuinely, the writing in this is so good. The pacing is delightful. The way, the quotes like are delectable. Like she writes so well about toxic love and the internal experience of these people who are going through these things and it's sort of like not in a linear time scheme either like you never really know how much time is passing it's not like a kind of da dum da dum da dum this is the storyline kind of book it's just kind of like here's everything that's happening at this moment all at once in present tense and here's everything that's led up to that and everything that's coming after that and it just kind of feels like one big whirlwind that you're living with them as they're in this toxic whirlwind relationship and it's honestly like trust me the the amount of annotations i have in this book is mad if you're into like fast-paced character driven books i highly recommend this the cover puts you off or like the I don't know, the concept of it puts you off. I really recommend giving it a go because I did not expect to love it as much as I did. And I've given it five stars. I really want to buy the US cover. I'm going to read all the other books and I really want to read the Daisy Hates books as well. So uh, a nice surprise, a really pleasant surprise. I'm so happy I read a five star in my first like wrap up. So fun. Does anyone else just love Percy Pigs? They're so god. The way that I organise my reading is I have Story Graph, which if you don't know is essentially Goodreads, but I believe it's like not linked to Amazon or something. I don't know. I prefer the interface of Story Graph and I've just used it for a little bit longer. So that's where I have everything, what I've read, what um, like all the books that I want to read, everything is saved on Storygraph. I have every book that I want to read in here. In my to read pile, I have like 256 books. That is every book that I ever hear about, see, want to read, have wanted to read for a long time is in this database. I can't really just go out to bookshops and if I fancy buying books I just get a load of them. So I tend to sort of organise my book buying according to what bunch of books I feel like I'm going to want to read next and sometimes I even do it by what one book I'm going to want to read next so I'm not like purchasing loads of books in one go and if I see a book in a bookshop that I think I'm going to like I'll take a picture of it. I've organised all of those 256 books into nine genre categories some kind of organisation to this so the categories that I've organised the books into is sci-fi, thriller, mystery, horror kind of together Poetry, non-fiction, so including memoirs, self-help books, all of that jazz. Lit fic, so that also includes historical fiction, fantasy, classics, series. So those series can be kind of any genre, but they're a series that I want to read. And romance. So they're the nine categories that I've organised my books into. And what I thought I could do is pick one book from each category for my immediate TBR, so the books that are going to be on my like high priority, these are the next books you're reading list, and that way I've got one book from every genre that I want to read. It means that I'm reading loads of different genres, it means that I'm dipping my toes into lots of different like books and lots of different things and different authors, I'm not just kind of sticking to one thing, but it also means that I can mood read in the sense of I have those nine books, but I can pick and choose which one I wanna read first, which one I wanna read next. Do you get the gist? For the first time, I just thought I would pick them myself because I don't wanna scare myself off. So I've literally just gone into each category, so sci-fi, thriller, romance, etc., and picked a book that I think I want to read first from that category. So, drum roll, please. My TBR for the next 
period of time. <laughs> so for sci-fi, I have, I only have one, two, three, I only have six books on my sci-fi TBR at the moment, and that is Project Hail Mary, How High We Go in the Dark, in the Lives of Puppets, In Ascension, Womb City, and Our Wives Under the Sea. And I looked at each of them and sort of had a read of the of the like the blurb and like what kind of vibe they were gonna be. And the thing that tickled my fancy first was In Ascension by Martin McInnes. McInnes, I'm not sure how to say his last name, but I went into Waterstones and this was their like pick of the week or something, which is so cool. And I didn't realize how thick it was, but it won the Booker Prize last year and it's got really, really good reviews. So I'm really excited to read this. It sounds so interesting. So there's a woman who's really interested in marine biology and then a trench is discovered in the Atlantic Ocean. So she joins the exploration team, hoping to find evidence of the Earth's first life forms. What she instead finds calls into question everything we know about our beginnings I just think it sounds really juicy and I've n I don't think I've ever read a sci-fi book so I wanted this to be my first one it's very highly acclaimed and I'm very excited to have a go and see what I think stay tuned I will let you know what I think have any of you read this let me know in the comments please and thank you so the next category is thriller mystery horror that vibe and the book that I chose for this one was Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. I already owned this, thought it would be good to choose this one because then I don't really need to go out and purchase a new book. I already own this one. So I thought I would have this one as my thriller. I think it's actually more of a horror, this one. Oh gosh, yeah. So it's described as a horror. I've heard I've heard so many people talk about this book. I'm behind, I haven't read it yet, and I'm really intrigued. I am very interested and intrigued. I'm kind of scared that it's a horror now, but the writing's huge. <laughs> the writing is huge. I feel like I could whip through this actually quite quick. I might do that as my first read. That is my choice for my horror book. The next category is poetry. I already owned this book by Elizabeth Acevedo. It's called The Poet X. And I went to go and see her do a talk at Waterstones for the release of her new book, Family Law, which I believe is like a magical realism fiction book. And everyone was obviously asking her questions about The Poet X and I have never read it. So I went out and I think I found this actually. I found this in one of those free libraries and I'd just been to see her the work with the and I'd just been to see her the work, oh, I can't speak, week before. So I thought it was fate. So I picked it up and I am really looking forward to having a dip into this. I feel like because it's poetry, I'm probably just gonna dip in and out of this throughout the other book. Also let me know if you wanna see like a reading vlog of me reading my TBR. And for my non-fiction pick, I have gone for, I started reading this already actually, it's called yeah, The Courage to be Disliked by Fumitaki Koga and Ishiro Kishima. I've butchered that, I apologise. I've, I've nearly finished it, I've been reading it on my phone. It's essentially a book about and I'll read you the description because it will explain it a lot better than I would be able to. It says, the courage to be disliked shows you how to unlock the power within yourself to become your best and truest self, change your future and find lasting happiness. Using the theories of Alfred Adler, one of the three giants of 19th century psychology, alongside Freud and Jung, the authors explain how we are all free to determine our own future, free of the shackles of past experiences, doubts and the expectations of others. It's a philosophy that's profoundly liberating, allowing us to develop the courage to change and to ignore the limitations that we and those around us can place on ourselves. I started reading this because there's like a lot of change going on in life at the moment and I didn't want like self-doubt or self-limiting beliefs to kind of play into anything that's unraveling at the moment so I just wanted to have this as a book that I can read when I'm on the treadmill at the gym just have it on my phone. I always think it's nice to have a non-fiction in the gym because I am like working on myself physically and mentally at the same time. Okay, the lip fic that I chose was 
Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Mellers. I still haven't read this, guys. I think everybody's read this, right? Am I so behind? I've owned this for a little while now. It's been sat on my bookshelf and I've never picked it up. I don't know why it's intimidating to me. I actually don't know why. I'm intimidated by it. I've heard really good things. Actually, I've heard mixed things. I think people will either love this or hate this, I think. So it's about Cleo and she lives in New York. She's 24, which is nice because it's kind of my age. I think she's having like a bit of a mad one and then she has a chance encounter on new year's eve and frank is a successful man 20 years older than her and i think it's about like their relationship so it's age gap interesting for my fantasy read again i already owned this book so i thought it'd be good to add it to the month tbr is Babel Babel by R.F. Kwong. I have not read this author before. I know they read they wrote Yellow Face, which I also haven't read yet. So that is definitely on my big old list of books that I want to read. This won the book of the year, I believe, the British fiction book of the year. And I started this and I just didn't get very far. I think I got like 20 pages in. It's very small writing. It's a lot of pages. And I feel like this is going to be a commitment kind of book. Like I have to be in the right mood, sit down, kind of bash out a lot of this so that I can actually get intrigued by it and get excited by the plot and stuff. But I've heard really good things. I'm really interested to read this book. I think the writing is going to be beautiful. I have a, I have a sense. So the classic book that I've chosen to read is actually a reread and that's Pride and Prejudice. I haven't read this book in absolutely years and I just wanted to give it another go, remind myself why it's Mr Darcy and why it's so popular and yeah just kind of one of those books that I've had on my list to reread for ages and I thought it'd be a good one to start with. And then series wise I'm going to continue with Magnolia Parks. I'm, I can't really jump between series, I have to like start it and finish it. So I'm going to pick up Magnolia Parks 2. I can't remember what it's called but I'll have it here. And yeah probably that's going to be my series now until I finish it. And then finally the romance that I would like to try is um, Alone With You in the Ether by Olive e. Blake. I have not read Olive e. Blake before and I am so so excited to read one of her books. I've heard such amazing things, they have such beautiful art in them. I think her writing is kind of existential and scary but beautiful and I'm just very excited to read her work so I'm going to pick that up once I've kind of made my way through some of the books I already own. That's all the books so there's nine books there that are on my up and coming TBR, the books that I'm going to be trying to work my way through next. I think I'll probably start with either Boy Parts or Cleopatra and Frankenstein, I'm not too sure, and then I will be dipping into the Poet X and I will be reading The Courage to be Disliked at the gym so kind of having a few on the go. If you want me to like vlog me reading any, any of these books or if you want like a specific video on any of these books, let me know. I'm very happy to do that. That's everything. That's my reading wrap up of the year so far and my up and coming TBR. These are the ones that I own. So a really nice mix of genres, authors, vibes, moods. I'm very excited to crack into these like a cold can of Coke. Let me know what you guys are reading in the comments. I love to know and let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought. I will see you in the next one. Have a lovely week and a lovely weekend. I hope it's sunny where you are and I hope you have a good sleep and I hope you hug your cat. Yeah, just have a lovely old time. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.